Good afternoon, or good, yeah, good afternoon for everybody. <laughs> and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you so much for being with us today. We are very excited to welcome back as our host, Fathom Travel. We really appreciate the support we all get from Fathom and thank them for that. The topic today is Fathom's Cultural Exchange Cruises to Cuba. And I know this is a topic of interest for all of us uh, to, uh, to get our clients uh, to Cuba. Our speaker today is Kim Mustin, Sales Coordinator for Cavum. For, I'm sorry, for Fathom. Kim says the following about herself. Travel has not only been my chosen career for just over 20 years, but it is most importantly my passion. Learning about different cultures and the people that inhabit those cultures is what I like to call my here here song. I have traveled to four continents, seven countries, and too many cities to count. One of my most unusual travel experiences had me riding an ostrich, and I certainly would like to hear about that, Kim. <laughs> I am a proud mama of two beautiful girls, Mackenzie and Kira. I grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, but I'm now happy to call Seattle, Washington my home. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area on the right-hand panel of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Kim now so she can get started. Welcome, Kim. Thank you so much, Sandy, for that warm welcome. And hello, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation on our cultural exchange cruise to Cuba. I do want to start just by introducing myself. I know you already know my name's Kim. I uh, just want to cover what I do with Fathom. I'm actually one of two sales coordinators with Fathom. And as a key member of the sales team, the sales coordinator is responsible for providing support to our BDMs. And a huge part of that involves assisting all of you, our travel partners. Recently, I was fortunate enough to sail to Cuba, so I'm very excited to share my experiences with all of you today as I take you through this amazing and very historic journey. Here at Fathom, we love to talk about what we are grateful for, so I think it's only fitting that I begin the presentation today by expressing how grateful Fathom is for the opportunity to speak with all of you today. We truly appreciate your commitment to both educating and engaging your clients with the Fathom experience. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So it is important to know that Fathom actually offers two very distinct uh, cruise experiences. Not only do we offer Cuba, which is our cultural exchange cruise to Cuba, it's all about connecting with the people of Cuba, that's what we're going to go over today, but we also offer a, a social impact cruise to the Dominican Republic, which combines people's love of travel with their desire to make a difference. Unlike our DR product, Cuba is not really looking for Fathom to come in and help necessarily. They're looking for us to come in and rebuild relationships. Fathom sails to Cuba under the People to People OFAC guideline, which is one of the 12 guidelines that Americans can travel to Cuba. Travelers can also select the self-guided option which allows them to break off from the Fathom on ground programming and create their own Cuban adventure and we will speak to that in a little bit more detail later on in the presentation. Our cultural exchange experience to Cuba allows our travelers the opportunity to create meaningful connections with the people of Cuba. And I can attest to this. I continually found myself connecting with the Cuban people throughout my entire journey in Cuba. No matter if I was in Havana or Santiago de Cuba, the conversations flowed very organically and they never ever felt awkward. This is partly due to what I believe is their, um, that they speak very good English number one. And the Cuba literacy rate, a lot of people don't know this, is 99.8%, which is top three in the world. If I ever found myself in a situation where it was difficult to communicate, there was always someone nearby to assist in the translation, whether it was another Fathom traveler that spoke a little bit of Spanish, or a Cuban that knew English better than this particular person. Always so easy to connect. Of all of the connections I made during my time spent in Cuba, I always I feel like I have to mention these two because they're so important. So the first connection that I remember is my connection with Maria. She spoke about her sister that actually lived in San Francisco. 
And although our conversation was brief, the connection really stayed forever in my heart. It was about her face, the way it lit up as she spoke about her sister and how she missed her. And it was, she kept talking about how she was so hopeful that soon she would be reunited with her sister. The interaction that I had with a little girl around my daughter's age, my daughter Kira is nine years old. Um, she came up and approached me in, in broken English and described my sparkly sunglasses and she tried to pull them off my face and it seemed like forever that we were alternating back and forth. She would try them on, I would try them on and she was smiling and giggling. The connection was completely unexpected which is what you'll find, all these unexpected connections coming at you and it was just so special. It truly melted my heart. That little girl is forever in my mental photo album. Now, this is important. This is a visual to help you kind of uh, take in our itinerary to Cuba. So we embark on the seven-day journey in Miami every other Sunday. Our first stop is going to be on Monday morning, about Monday 11 o'clock in the morning, in the colorful city of Havana. Our travelers will spend a full day and overnight in Havana. Now, I do want to mention that as you're traveling into Havana, we kind of start coming into Havana at about 9 o'clock in the morning. So if your client has got a balcony, or if they don't, make sure you mention this. At 9 o'clock in the morning, they either want to be sitting out on their balcony or up in the crow's nest or up at the top uh, by the Lido deck, and they want to start watching this absolutely beautiful transition as you come into Old Havana. The scenery is absolutely stunning. The, the, the floral and fauna, the statues, the, the industrial aspect to all of it is absolutely breathtaking. So just kind of take that as a tip. You have plenty of time, a couple hours, to experience, to already start experiencing Havana as you pull in. The ship will spend Wednesday. Now, remind you, we are we are there overnight. Just I'll repeat this again, but we will be in Havana overnight, and then on uh, sun, Wednesday we'll be at sea, and we arrive into Cienfuegos on Thursday morning for a half day visit, which is followed by a full day visit in Santiago de Cuba on Friday. Our travelers will enjoy one more relaxing day at sea on Saturday before they arrive back in Miami on Sunday morning. Now let's talk a little bit how we're getting all of our Fathom travelers to Havana and to Cuba, and that's the beautiful Adonia. The Adonia is very small. She accommodates about 704 guests and is just over 30,000 tons. We like to call her our, her our jewel box, and that's just due to her size and her boutique-esque charm on board. The Adonia was originally built under Renaissance in 2001 as the R8 and sailed briefly as the Royal Princess before settling in with our sister brand, p and UK. Now, if you're familiar with the Azamara brand and you've either been on or sold the Quest or the Journey, those are the sister ships to the Adonia, the R5 and the R6, as well as Oceana. She has some of the R-Class ships. Now, if you're familiar with that product, you would feel very comfortable getting around the Adonia. The Adonia was refurbished completely in 2011, and in March of 2016, we fathomized her just prior to her inaugural sailing to the Dominican Republic on April 17th. Now, you're probably wondering, what does fathomize mean? Basically, we added slight touches to the already beautiful decor that we believed would help us create a community of like-minded travelers. Now, we're going to start p pulling through the Adonia with the staterooms. Now, we have a brief transition delay here. I apologize for that. But the staterooms are going to provide a very simple layout. What you see here is what you get. Four categories of staterooms, interior, ocean view, balcony, and suites. Now, each stateroom category will provide fair, fair trade toiletries, a blow dryer, an electric kettle uh, accompanied with some tea and instant coffee, and one bottle of water per person, which is replenished every day, and of course an in-room safe. Now, important to know about our interiors, we only have 42 interiors on the entire ship. Um, if you want to get four people in a stateroom, the interior category is the only category to allow a quad. Ocean view rooms are all made up of picture windows, with the exception of maybe a handful, which are portholes, 
And it's also important to know that the ocean view category, we don't sell any obstructed views. All of those are priced out as interiors. Now our balcony category takes up over 60% of our allotment. And for suites, we have 10 suites on the entire ship. Some of those suites actually connect with the next door balcony. If you're wondering about square footage, our balconies are 214 square feet, not including the balcony, and our suites range from 756 to 929 square feet. Now, I spoke about fathomizing the Adonia a little bit earlier, and one of those fathomizing um, additions was the postcard wall. The postcard wall allows our travelers to write a quick note to their future selves. Basically, they come up to this wall, they pull off a postcard, they fill out whatever they want. For me, I filled in that I wanted to remind myself to take Spanish lessons when I got home. Then you drop it in the box, just as you see on the slide there, and Fathom takes care of delivering that to your home. It's an absolute uh, fantastic idea, and all of our Fathom travelers absolutely love it. Another addition to Fathomization was our Mayfair Boutiques, and now I think we've transitioned here. Um, what you're looking at is a, an example of one of the shops we offer. Now, all of the shops we offer on board provide an onboard shopping experience through a selection of brands that we believe are making a positive difference in the world. So we've got Bahalia, Shinola, we would even body shop. Those are just a few of the socially responsible brands that we have on board. To give you a little bit of background on WeWood, so all of the watches um, that are provided by WeWood are made of mostly scrap wood. So together with their um, tree planting partners, American Forests, Trees for the Future, their goal, as they like to say, is to restore Mother Nature one watch at a time. Shinola sunglasses, some of you may already know of this trend. They're sold on board and they're all made out of recycled skateboards. So just very unique, positive brands that we provide on board. Now, the Adonia really does have all of the modern day cruise ship amenities, but I can tell you one thing we have left out is the casino. We just don't feel that the casino fits in with our brand, especially to our cause of giving back and making a difference. But everything else is there for our guests, including this amazing pool deck, which features a saltwater pool, two jacuzzi tubs, um, a bar, a cafe, plenty of lounge chairs. Now, before we move on, I also want to point out that we have complimentary self-serve laundry on board. One tip to your clients, bring a little travel size detergent. Other than that, the uh, complimentary self-serve laundry is, is there for our travelers and we've gotten great feedback on that. All right, let's talk about some of our venues on board. This is my favorite spot on the entire ship. It's called the Glass House. You can see just from the floor to ceiling windows, this is on deck 10. The Glass House provides absolutely stunning views. It's the perfect surroundings to kind of unwind after a full day of activities in Cuba. And the wine is absolutely outstanding. It's all organic and responsibly sourced wines. And again, my favorite spot on the entire ship. Absolutely stunning. Now let's take a look at our dining options. So we're going to start with our um, specialty restaurant called the Ocean Grill. That's what you're seeing in this slide here. And this exceptional menu is inspired by both local Cuban and Dominican dishes. And all of the dishes have been created by our award-winning chef, Emil Vega, who's from the Dominican Republic. There is a minimal surcharge of $25 per person, uh, US, to dine uh, for dinner. Now on sea days, this uh, restaurant is also open for lunch. And on those days, it would be $15 per person. My personal favorites would be the black bean soup and the pork belly. Absolutely outstanding. Now, of course, our dining venue is not limited to the specialty restaurant. Some additional experiences can be found at the conservatory, which is our buffet restaurant, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. The food is absolutely outstanding. There's even an outdoor dining section, which I actually um, took advantage of this section for my morning coffee every day. And some of the travelers even took advantage of it for a nightcap, uh, just to kind of unwind and get ready for our next day of, of connections in Cuba. We also have the Pacific Restaurant, which is the main dining room, and it offers tables ranging from a table for two to even a few tables for 14. Most big group tables are going to be for 10, though, so just remember that. The Pacific Restaurant is also open for breakfast, 
and dinner every day, and on sea days she's open for lunch. Now, it's important to know that our main dining room and the uh, buffet are included in the price of the cruise. It is important for us at Fathom that our travelers have the flexibility to dine when they want and with whom they want. So for that reason, we do not have set seating times or assigned seating. Um, and our dress code is casual, resort casual. There's no formal nights. doesn't mean you can't dress up, but our travelers don't need to feel obligated to do so. All right, I like to show this slide. It's our library. It's actually quite big for... Um, Sorry, that's showing on my screen there. Um, it's actually quite big for the size of our ship. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, a full, a stacked library, and what's really important about that is all of these books were hand-picked by our Fathom staff. Okay, so right now we are going to move on to our onboard programming. Our onboard programming is all about our on-ground journey, so it complements one another. Um, and really for both of our amazing destinations, whether you're going to Cuba or the Dominican Republic. So now that we've learned all about the Jewel Box, let's go ahead and step into our onboard programming. So our onboard programming consists of enrichment classes. Enrichment classes such as Spanish phrases, and I will tell you guys, if you want to give your clients a tip, if you're going to take this cruise yourself, make sure you take Spanish phrases. It's so important to your entire experience in Cuba or the Dominican Republic to just get that phrasing down. Whether you have a Spanish background, maybe you took it in high school, haven't used it since, maybe you're like me and you don't have any Spanish um, language in your background, this is so important. It's going to help you re either reintroduce you to the, that phrasing, simple, Hi, how are you? My name is, what is your name? Different um, body positioning, anything like that. It's so important. This will definitely 100% help with your connection to the Cuban people. The, they're interactive lessons, so they're certainly not boring. And it's really, the, the reason we do this is just to basically increase our travelers' confidence when they're communicating in Spanish. Now, we've also partnered with the Stanford Storytelling Lab to create four different workshops, which include the Story of You, Impact Story, Story Circle, Fathom Fast. Now, this is included on both uh, ex cruise experiences to the DR in Cuba. And you may be asking yourself, why would we want to take uh, storytelling classes for our trip to, to Cuba? Here's why. Again, it's all about making those amazing connections on ground. And in order to do that, we need our travelers to open up a little bit. It's really easy to get inside yourself and kind of put up a block, put up a wall, um, work within that shell that you've created over so many years. And these storytelling labs help you break out of that. And that's how we help you make the perfect connection in Cuba. Absolutely essential. And of course, we have our Cuba history lessons. Each evening before we come into a particular port of call, we're going to tell you all about that port. Tips and tricks, all these great inf uh, this great information that you need on that city to make your connection there and your time there that much more effective. And we've got a Cuban book club. We've got dance lessons. All of this and so much more. And all of this is brought to you by our Fathom Impact Guides. They're absolutely phenomenal. Without them, we would not be able to provide the experience that we provide. They are so friendly. They're absolutely marvelous people. And I promise you, you will get to know each and every one of them by name before you leave that ship seven days later. All right, now I can't forget our health and wellness program, sunrise yoga, and evening meditation classes at the top of the ship. Just imagine if you're into yoga, if you're into meditation, being able to do that at the top of the ship with views of Havana surrounding you, with views of Cienfuegos and Santiago, Cuba. Just an amazing atmosphere. We also have spa acupuncture and deck boot camp. Now, we also have, this is one of my favorites, the cocktail class, absolutely loved it. It's uh, only $15 per person. We know that prices can change, but at this time it's just $15 per person. You learn how to mix the traditional mojito, the original daiquiri, uh, amongst a few more. But what's really most important is that we are helping our Fathom travelers get to know each other just a little bit better. And you can see that through this slide right here. Of course, I can't not mention our very popular paint, wine and paint night. This event is sold out literally every cruise. 
It is so fun. It's really actually kind of cute to see how our travelers become uh, very artistic with just a, a glass of wine behind them. So really fun and give your clients a tip if they want to partake in this, they need to sign up immediately because as I said, it sells out right away. All right, as I said before, we are going to cover the people to people exchange. What does that mean? And when we first launched our product, there was a perception out there that our Fathom travelers had to follow us everywhere we went. They couldn't break off from our programming, and that's just absolutely not true. So our Fathom travelers can experience Cuba in a few different ways, actually three different ways, and I'll go over those with you now. We have our sponsored people-to-people, -people, which basically our travelers stay with Fathom programming the entire time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Then we have our self-guided people-to-people, which means our, our Fathom travelers can venture off on their own and create their own Cuban adventure. And finally, they can do a combination of both sponsored and self-guided. They can mix it up a little bit. So they may want to start with Fathom in the morning and maybe they feel a little bit more comfortable in the afternoon so they'll go off and venture on their own. And I'll give you continued examples of this as we go through um, the presentation. Now the P2P experience, also known as people to people, is really a program, if, you, if your clients are asking you, a really good way to explain it is it's just a, a program consisting of a full-time schedule of education educational and cultural exchange activities between Americans and Cubans. So think of interactions with musicians and they're everywhere, um, artists, entrepreneurs, and, and more. It's about experiencing the people, the places, and the culture. That's what it's all about, open discussions that will leave a lasting impact within our tra uh, Fathom travelers, uh, a deeper understanding of cross cultures, if you will. So that's what People to People is all about. The whole educational and cultural exchange is just that. It's an exchange of students, artists, athletes between two countries, really to just promote a mutual understanding. That's but this is all about to open up those new bridges to make those connections. All right, we are going to start diving into each of the beautiful cities that we visit um, while we're in Cuba. We're going to start with Havana. Um, Havana, as many of you know, is Cuba's capital, but what she's really known for is the Spanish-influenced architecture of old Havana. And that's where day one is going to come in, and we'll go over that in just a moment. There is an exceptional, eclectic, and sophisticated mix of museums, art galleries, music, dance, and open-air festivals. It's just, there's something for everybody, literally, in Havana. So, now, day one, we call it our Old Havana Walking Tour with Lunch. So, as we pull into Havana on Monday mid-morning, so remember, we're getting there at 11, and our travelers have already been either sitting on their balcony, or they've been up in the crow's nest, maybe they're up at the, on the Lido, on the, uh, on the outdoor dining section of the conservatory, watching the scenery as we pull into Old Havana. Now, we pull into Old Havana. This is another luxury that we have of having such a small ship. But you can pull right in there. Now, when we pull in, you can already see some of the uh, four squares that we're going to visit that day. Now, our, our travelers are filled with anticipation, as you can imagine. There's a disembarkation time for each of our travelers, so they're waiting. You know, they're waiting for their, their uh, time to be called. Now, when their time's called, they're going to come off the ship. They're going to go through customs right away, so they're going to have their passport on them. They're going to have their visa, which is provided to them at, at check-in. Um, and they give the custom agent their passport and their visa. They get uh, their passport back and they carry on. Next step, they're probably going to convert their US dollars into Cuban convertible pesos, also known as kooks. I'll explain that a little bit more later. And then they're going to either meet their Havana tour guide or they're going to just venture off on their own right away. What's really special is whether you're meeting a Havan tour guide or going off on your own, it takes literally minutes to walk through this ter terminal and you step out right into Old Havana. And what they say is true. It says if time has stood still for 50 plus years. The colors, the cars, the buildings, it's absolutely breathtaking. When I stepped out of that cruise terminal, everything looked exactly as I had pictured it to. It was so, it was breathtaking, absolutely. Um, now, 
our travelers um, basically will spend six and a half hours if they're with Fathom programming in uh, Old Havana and they'll visit each of the four squares. There's four of them all together. Um, now they'll get a rich history lesson in each of these squares. Um, they'll have the opportunity to meet local cafe owners. Remember this is all about the Cuban connection. So they'll meet local cafe owners, merchants and artists. That's just to mention a few. Those are just what's kind of coming off the top of my head. And once that that's all done. Once they've made those connections, they'll have time to go off on their own, even with the Fathom programming. So one of our Fathom employees once said, and this has stuck with me ever since, tourists travel and travelers seek. So in order to make sure our Fathom travelers seek, we encourage all of our travelers to pursue personal and meaningful people-to-people -people exchange. So once the Havan tour guide has given them this history lesson on that particular square that they're in, they will then say, okay, you now have on your own time, and it's about 15 to 20 minutes, plenty of time to go around and kind of see things for yourselves. Um, now, you might think it might be hard to, to find somebody to make a connection with. Trust me, it's not. They are willing, they are ready to open their hearts and connect with the travelers. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, as our travelers are going through the squares, they'll run into opportunities like this one. And sorry, we're just waiting for this slide to transition. Now, this is very typical of what you'll see. This young man sitting here is the artist of all these beautiful paintings. And he is waiting to connect and explain his art and talk about his life and where he came from and where he sees himself going from here. Um, this is just another example of um, what our Fathom travelers will experience either on their own as, uh, as going off on their own and, and, and seeking or uh, sticking with Fathom uh, programming. Here's another example. This, in, this is in the square of Plazas de Armas. This is a bookseller's market which outlines the entire square. It's the largest bookseller's market in all of Cuba. Now again, the writers, the authors, they're, they're here waiting to talk about their um, books, their novels, um, and so are the Fathom people. They are, sorry, so are the Cuban people. People. They understand that all of the travelers are coming here, and so they're waiting to make those connections. And like I said, it's not difficult. Their English is fantastic, and if it's, if it's not so fantastic, there's always somebody around to help with those connections. Now, on day two, instead of walking, we're now jumping into a beautifully air-conditioned motor coach, um, and we start with a panoramic tour of Havana. And that will include stops at attractions such as the Revolution Square, which is what you're looking at now. Now, Revolution Square is where Castro has addressed millions of Cubans on many occasions. It's where the Pope comes to speak again to millions of Cubans for sometimes upwards of even eight hours. It's a very historic site, very meaningful to the Cuban people. Now, what, um, and this is another opportunity that our Fathom travelers seem to take uh, to do self-guided. Now, the outskirts uh, of the square are surrounded by Amer old American cars that have been transformed into taxis. And each of these taxi drivers are like your own personal tour guides. It costs about 35 kooks an hour, which is equivalent to about $35 American. You hop into the car and either you in your mind have somewhere you want to go, or you'll say, hey, listen, we want to we see Cuba your way. Take us where you think we should go, and off you go. And it's an absolute Absolutely magnificent experience. It's very safe to do so, by the way. I know that's a question probably on everybody's mind. Is it safe? Yes, absolutely 100% safe to do so. Now, we know that on day two, after we've, you know, toured, done a panoramic city tour of Havana, we've stopped at beautiful attractions like Revolution Square, our travelers are going to be hungry. And what we've prepared, prepared for our travelers is to take them on a true Cuban experience by dining in a local restaurant or a paladar, which is a privately run restaurant out of a Cuban family's home. It's the perfect complement to a day filled with Cuban connections, and the cuisine is absolutely out of this world. Now, we, our motor coach tour uh, from Revolution Square is going to continue. Uh, we'll have views of El Capitolio, which is actually currently under uh, renovations. Um, we'll go up the famed Arena Street, where the architecture is 
outstanding. You've got Art Nouveau, you've got Colonial, you've got Art Deco. It's it's all there for us to enjoy. So if you're into architecture, no matter where you are in Cuba, it, it's absolutely exquisite. Um, now we'll also take our travelers up the famous Paseo del Prado and past Park Central. Now this is where passionate baseball fans can sometimes be overheard. And I'm, I'm not talking, I, I mean passionate doesn't really describe it. Cubans are in love with baseball. And when you come past this park, you can hear them arguing and they're getting right in each other's faces and you almost think they're fighting, but they really aren't. They're just so passionate about baseball. They're talking about the greats. They're talking about current players. Um, it's just, it's really, it's really quite interesting and uh, very cultural to see this take place. Now, also, I just want to mention, because this has just reopened after the last two years, the Cuban National Ballet, which is held at the Gran Teatro de la Havana. If you're there and you can get tickets, please do it. If you're if you are into dance and into art of that nature, do it. It is absolutely phenomenal. Now, this is the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes. Um, this is a stop on our tour of day two. We're here for about 90 minutes, and it's an opportunity to really get connected with the Cuban art scene. There's uh, a, our collection, which really spans over five centuries. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, we have four different community art projects that our travelers have the opportunity to see. You'll get to see one of the four. You won't know which one, but it doesn't matter because they're all absolutely fantastic. The one that we're showing you here is Fusterlandia. Now, Jose Fuster is a very famous artist in Cuba, also very famous in Miami as he was born in Cuba and made his way to Miami and then came back to Cuba. When he came back to Cuba, he started building his home. This is his house. This is a, an actual house. It's very mosaic, as you can see from the art uh, type. Um, now, what's really kind of uh, cool about this and how this becomes an, a community art project is that his neighbors started coming by and wanted to know, hey, you know, can you do my house like that? So to date, he has transformed over 130 homes to look just like his. So really cool art project to see. But we've also got Moroliando. We've got Art Court. We've got, you know, there's another one that's not coming to mind right now. But it's an absolute um, opportunity to see any one of these art projects. Now, one important thing is we do have um, a final stop on day two. If you're talking to your clients, this would be the best day for shopping. So Tuesday in Havana, best day for shopping. We take you to the uh, largest craft market in Havana called the San Jose Artisans Market. It's literally walking distance from the ship. That's why we do it last. So if our travelers are just done, they want to head back to the ship, they can either catch a quick uh, coconut taxi back to the ship or they can walk. Um, or if they want to spend a little bit more time shopping, they can. Um, and it's just, it's exquisite. It's all handmade jewelry, masks, paintings, anything and everything you could possibly want to purchase is there. All right, so we, as mentioned, as I mentioned, we will be in Havana overnight, right? So what better way than to join Fathom for some a Monday night excursion? You can join us either to the Tropicana or the Parisian at the Nacional Hotel. Those are two um, offers that we have right now. They're additional. Um, or you can go out into Old Havana and experience it all yourself. Experience that nightlife. It's very safe. Again, I know that's a question on everybody's mind, but it's very, very safe to go out and experience the, um, uh, the Cuban nightlife. It is important to know that due to ground limitations, Havana will be the only opportunity to experience Cuban nightlife. Um, that's just due to the time frame that we are in Cienfuegos and Santiago de Cuba. Um, one story I will tell you really quick about um, Monday night in Havana. Literally everything is alive. You're walking through and you're familiar with it already because you have done the entire day of all the um, four squares and then you spent this time all day on Tuesday exploring the city. Uh, which you wouldn't do, I guess, before Monday. But anyways, it's absolutely, you, you already know where you want to go. And people are talking about it on the ship. You'll probably end up even going out with people you've never met before because you just make such co strong connections, not only with the Cuban people, but with your own Fathom, Fathom travelers. Um, one of our 
um, two of our Fathom Impacts guides are actually married, Katie and Colin. Um, they had been on the ship for a while. They just wanted a really nice meal in Havana. And um, so they're searching around for a nice place to eat, and they run into this Cuban man, and he's like, no, you guys need Romantico. You guys need to go somewhere nice and romantic. So he takes them on this little walking tour, and of course they're both very hungry. So at this point they're like, where is this guy taking us? Where are we going? So in and out of these alleys, up and down stairs, and finally he takes them up uh, into this paladar, which again is a uh, owned by a Cuban family. And they go up these stairs, and all of a sudden they get to this beautiful uh, rooftop where it's just lit with lights and romantic table settings and music in the background from from musicians it was absolutely phenomenal uh, an experience they will you know never have again probably and just absolutely that that is just an example of what you can experience with the Havana nightlife all right, let's move on. I could talk about that forever. <laughs> All right, so Cienfuegos, the next stop. Uh, we are here for half a day. Remember, we're only here for about four hours, four to five hours. Um, Cienfuegos is known to the Cubans as the Pearl of the South, and as soon as you get here, it's absolutely, um, you can see why they call it the Pearl of the South. Now, you can already see from the picture that the architecture changes from Old Havana, but behind this beautiful building is this wide open uh, seaside boulevard that you can walk down, and it encompasses the entire bay, and it just sparkles. And so that's, you know, obviously where they came up with the Pearl of the South. It is an old world uh, heritage site by UNESCO. Uh, so is Old Havana, by the way. Now, when we get to Cienfuegos, we begin with a walking city tour, and we walk down the main street, which is lined with all this beautiful marble and filled with vendors selling a collection of handmade items. And then we take our travelers either into a pharmacy, a market, or a local ration store. And that's to help our travelers better understand the Cuban dual currency system. Now at the end of this uh, walking city tour is the Teatro Thomas Terry, which is what you're looking at now. This slot, this uh, theater, is absolutely stunning. It's a 950-seat auditorium, all made out of wood on the inside, and underneath of it is running water. Both of those attributes contribute to a stunning acoustics, absolutely phenomenal. So once we take this 20-minute tour of the um, theater, our Fathom Travelers all sit down to a private performance from one of the choirs in Cuba absolutely stunning. The acoustics obviously help, but they're, the singing is so beautiful, very emotional. Now after the concert, the our Fathom Travelers will get to actually talk to the singers. Um, they get to talk to them about their life, um, their life now as they're all teachers that work in the music industry teaching kids music, whether it's in a community center, in a school, uh, one of the two. And they get a, an opportunity to, to get to know them a little bit better, which is what it's all about. Again, it's all about connections. Now, um, of course, remember, we encourage our travelers to seek personal and meaningful people-to-people -people connections. So don't forget about that. And here's just a little uh, picture of that, that those wide seaside boulevards and that sparkling bay. Absolutely stunning. Now we move on to Santiago de Cuba. You can already tell by the beautiful colors. This is what Santiago de Cuba is all about. You, you see it right away. That Caribbean spirit is there. It's very evident. The music, the colors, it's very different from both Cienfuegos and Havana. Um, now, it's home to popular festivals, as you can see in this um, uh, slide, either a Carnival or maybe Fiesta del Fuego. Um, but it's also the second largest city. And some actually argue that Santiago de Cuba is the most important, and that's because uh, Santiago is the birthplace, and this is just a little history for you, of Ron, Sun, and Revolución, which are the watchtowers and cannons that were used in the Spanish-American War, and they're actually still used today to protect this port city. 
Now, our day in Santiago de Cuba, it's a full day instead of a half a day like Cienfuegos. And it starts off with a short panoramic drive through the city. You pass by um, venues such as San Juan Hill, Antonio Maceo, Revolution Square, and Plaza de Mart. And, and the whole time you have on tour guide is, is telling you all about these very famous um, um, places. Now, what's really um, important about this visit is the fortress. That was so special to me. If you're a historian uh, lover, then you will love this point of the trip. Um, the fortress is called Castillo de San Pedro de la Roca, and it's a fortress that was constructed back in 1637. Now, this Think about 1637, this structure is built five stories up the side of a cliff. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, once you come into the fortress, there is a local Cuban historian everywhere. They're everywhere ready to talk to you about this fortress and about the history behind it. And it's absolutely, it, it was just incredible. I could have stayed there all day. Um, our travelers get to see the best preserved examples of the Spanish American military architecture and artifacts. Um, it's just absolutely stunning. All right, and then uh, here's just a beautiful sunset picture as the sun's going down. We're still there, um, and we get to visit one of four community art projects again, most of it uh, around music and dance, and um, so just absolutely a stunning place, and the magic of Santiago is so true. It's just a magical place. Now, why travel with us to Cuba? So, number one, budget is super important. As you know, almost everything is included in the cost. All of the Fathom sponsored programming I just went over is included in the cost of the cruise with the exception of the Monday night Fathom options. Everything's included. Now, simplicity. Simplicity matters, as you guys know. Once you get on that ship, you're on that ship, you unpack and pack once. Um, not only that, you get off the plane in Miami, you hop on the ship in Miami, and you're done for the next seven days. Uh, comfortability matters. You are traveling in the very comfortable Adonia, as you've already seen. She's air conditioned, your cabins are air conditioned, all the public areas are air conditioned, you can jump in the pool, you don't have to worry about wondering if there's air conditioning or not. You don't have to worry about room availability. As most of you know, it's like a six or seven month, uh, month wait list to get into a hotel in Cuba. Now, of course, you want somebody that has some expertise. We are the 10th and newest brand under Carnival Corporation. It's a great corporation to be under. They are experts in both Cuba and the U.S. with years and years of experience. And it's a trip of a lifetime. Right? Let's get there now. Let's not wait. Let's not wait. Let's not get there once it starts changing because we all know it will. It's very historic. It's an opportunity to help us build new bridges and create new cultural understanding. All right. A few factor fiction. This will really help you with those questions that are coming from your clients um, as they come up all the time. Number one, do I need to get my own visa to travel to Cuba? No, you do not. We take care of the visa for all of our travelers no matter where they're from, Okay, with the exception of Cuban-born um, uh, travelers. Now, basically, we issue the visa. Um, basically, once we have our manifest, we associate those visas by numbers and names. Um, so when they get to the pier, we just hand them their visa and we write down that number next to their name. So it doesn't matter when you book. You don't have to book outside a certain date in order for us to get that visa ready for you. You could book the day before sailing and you'd be fine. So we take care of the visa for our travelers. There is a fee of $75 for that. Cuban-born citizens are absolutely able to travel with Fathom. Do I need to get my own Cuban-required re uh, medical insurance? A lot of people don't know that any traveler coming to Cuba must provide proof of medical insurance at the point of entry. We take care of that for our clients so they don't have to worry about it. It's built into the cost of the cruise. Now, this obviously doesn't include trip cancellation. It doesn't include things like repatriation or evacuation. So we do still recommend that our clients um, purchase a third party at least for trip cancellation. Will I be able to use my cell phone in Cuba? Now, Cuba does have hot spots. You can always tell because there will be, you know, a horde of people in, around one area, and that's because they're getting Wi-Fi there. So it's not guaranteed, and it's not guaranteed that your provider will have service in Cuba. So I wouldn't depend on that. 
Of course, you can use it on the ship, and we'll go over Wi-Fi shortly. Um, can you purchase items to bring home while in Cuba? Absolutely. And of course, the underlining question here is, can you bring home Cuba cigars? And the answer to that is yes. It used to be, as of uh, up to last week, you could bring back up to $100 worth of tobacco and alcohol. Now it's unlimited. So you can bring back as much tobacco and as much alcohol as you want. But it has to be for personal use only. Uh, no online purchases, that type of thing. But you can purchase as much as you want when it comes to Cuban cigars or Cuban rum. All right, next up. Can I use U.S. credit cards? No, they are not. Uh, you cannot use those while you're in Cuba. Um, and you cannot use U.S. dollars in Cuba either. Now let's go talk about our currency conversion. So you bring your U.S. dollars with you. You get off the ship. In every port of call, whether it's Havana, Cienfuegos, or Santiago de Cuba, we will provide our travelers with the opportunity to exchange their money into kooks, convertible Cuban pesos, before they even leave the cruise terminal. So that's how that works. And even when we're coming back on our last day in Santiago de Cuba, when we're coming back to the ship, we remind our clients to exchange their US, their kooks back into US dollars because, of course, you won't be able to do that back in the US. All right, a few uh, um, frequently asked questions around our terms and conditions. How much is the deposit? It's $600 per person. What are our final payment terms? 90 days prior to departure. Our triple and quad pricing is 50% 50% of the first and second um, pricing based on double. We do have a single supplement policy, 150% for interior, ocean view, and balcony. We have group pricing, absolutely $100 less than our FIT pricing. We have a tour conductor, uh, one for 15, so every 16th birth is free. And we do have a really great student group policy. If you're interested, I'll give you some contact information in just a moment. What is the dress code? So just a reminder, uh, dress code is resort casual, no formal nights. All right, so on gratuities, we haven't mentioned that yet. Gratuities are $11.50 per person per day, and you can pay for that on the last day of your cruise. At this time, we don't have uh, pr the prepaid gratuity functionality. Now, this is a frequently asked question that comes up a lot. Um, we do need your help communicating um, our um, process uh, to your clients. Um, it may come as a surprise, but we actually discourage donations. We know that our travelers' hearts are in the right place, but basically the Fathom Impact Model was designed to empower the people with long-term sustainable programs, and donations, believe it or not, actually create an unsustainable dependence. Tendency. We don't want our uh, Cuban, um, you know, the the people of Cuba seeing the Adonia coming in every other Sunday going, oh, I wonder what they're going to bring us. I wonder what they're going to bring us. We want them focused on the connections that they're going to make. So that's why we uh, don't allow the donations. Sometimes, honestly, it's even hard for us to get the supplies off the ship just due to a governmental um, block sometimes. So sometimes then we're stuck with all these supplies that we, we can't get rid of. So um, if we, we could ask for your help in communicating that, that would be great. Um, dress code we already went over. We do not have beverage packages. And passports are absolutely required, you guys. I know this is a closed looped cruise in and out of the same US home port, but passports are required. Uh, access to Wi-Fi, absolutely anywhere from $11.75 to $37.50 per day. And the minimum age to sail to Cuba is eight years old. Here is our new lead in pricing, absolutely phenomenal. We've got November 27th through May 28th. Okay, so those are the dates that our $13.99 price point for interior staterooms starts. Now, it used to be $18.99, just so you guys are aware. So this is a, a really great uh, price point. And what's even greater is we're offering bonus commission, up to $300 bonus commission, $150 per person. And this is on top of whatever your regular commission structure is. So absolutely phenomenal opportunity for you guys to get your clients to Cuba and make some extra money as well. We do have our uh, community Appreciation Fair, which is for November 6th only, but look at those rates, absolutely fantastic. If you've got a firefighter, a policeman, somebody in the military, um, teachers, uh, they all qualify for this amazing rate. 
Now, of course, we want all of you guys to be able to experience this product. We know that if you experience it, the more confident you will be. So here is what we have for you guys. All of these dates, November 6th, December 11th, and 25th, look at those prices. Only $6.99 for an interior, $7.99 for Ocean View, only $8.99 per person for a balcony. That is a phenomenal rate, and guess what? You can bring a guest, a non-travel agent guest, and they pay that same rate. Taxes can be up to $208 depending on your sailing, and there's that $75 visa fee. How do you book Fathom? Polar Online. If you are already set up with Holland America or Princess or OneSource, you are already set up. Put in those credentials, select the Fathom shopping path, and you're on your way. We also have an amazing call center. All of our call center support agents are used to work for Holland America. They now work for Fathom, so they've got years of experience behind them. And they, not only that, they're waiting to help you. They want to help you book. They want to help you answer any questions you have. Now, sales support, that's myself and Laura, sales support at fathom.org. Any question you have, little or, or big, doesn't matter. We are here to support you 100%. This is also really important for you guys. We have a travel professional portal. Anything you could ever need to promote or sell Fathom is located in this portal, whether it's a video you want to upload to your social media, whether it's a customizable flyer that you want to sell out to a uh, send out to a client, whether you want to apply for that TA rate, that application is in here. Whatever you may need, it's in this travel professional portal, fathom.org forward slash travel professional portal. All right, you guys, we have finally made it to the question and answer period. I think we've got five or ten minutes. So, Sandy, um, I will turn it back over to you. Okay, great. That was absolutely fantastic, Kim. Uh, I can't imagine that we have not all identified clients or, or groups that we want to take to Cuba on this uh, wonderful ship. Um, so Fantastic. Yeah, we do have quite a few questions, and let's get to sure. as many as we can. Is this sure. a, a cruise uh, program appropriate for physically challenged passengers? Yes, and it, w it would depend on the degree. Um, so if it's just walking issues, Old Havana is all cobblestone, and sometimes the sidewalks seem to be a bit high. However, when I was there, we had degrees of disability, and um, if it was just sort of a, a walking issue, keeping up, um, it, that wasn't a problem because you could either kind of hang back and catch up on your own time, um, and there's always somebody kind of to help um, get or, get you around. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, that's absolutely fine. Just remember that going into Cuba and going into some of the restaurants and some of the venues, they're not at par like we are here in America with accessible standards. Um, but I would say if it's just a, a low degree of disability, yes, absolutely, you can still enjoy Cuba. Okay, fantastic. Uh, while we get to the rest of the questions, Kim, do you mind putting back up that slide with all of the contact information, the uh, phone of number? Of course. That would be yep. really helpful. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, is wine included either in the regular restaurant or in the specialty restaurants that charge extra? It's not. However, you can bring one bottle of wine or one bottle of champagne per person on board. Okay, that's great. Is room service available? Room service is available uh, Monday uh, Monday morning as we come into Havana, uh, but that's the only day that it's available, and there is a five dollar surcharge. Okay, and what is the nationality of the crew? Great question. Um, I had this question asked before. So a lot of the officers are from the UK, um, as she was P&O UK before coming over to us. And a lot of the crew, housekeeping, that type of thing, um, a lot of Indonesian, Filipino, um, mostly. Um, and then there's um, Indian, uh, East Indian uh, as well, um, uh, for the most part. Okay, excellent. Um, you mentioned that there was an extra cost for the wine and the paint programs on board, the wine tasting. Could you uh, repeat what the cost is and are there other activities like the Spanish classes that have an extra cost? 
Sure, really great question. So wine and paint at this time, subject to change of course, $39 per person. That does include uh, the painting and a large glass of either red or white wine with or a soft drink. Um, and that, that and the cocktail class are the only two classes that cost money. The storytelling, the enrichment classes, the history classes, the book club, all of that is uh, included in the cost of the cruise. Okay, excellent. Are transfers available from the Miami airport to the ship? At this time, we don't have pre or post cruise packages. However, and if you're not familiar, Miami to the air, Miami uh, airport to the port is quite close. It's of anywhere from twenty to twenty-five dollars for a cab ride. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that information. Um, Absolutely. For people to go off on their own, are they completely free to go off on their own and do what they want with um, passport in hand? Are there any restrictions? What's the story on that? Yes, they are. And I'm glad you asked that just to reconfirm. It's absolutely okay to go off on your own. Now, people to people, remember, is all about American to Cuban connection. Um, so the really the only thing that wouldn't be con included in that classification would be laying on the beach and not talking to anybody and just not doing anything. And really, the closest beach, if anybody's wondering, in any of the cities that we offer is going to be at least 30 minutes out and not always the easiest places to get to. A lot of the beach areas are on e the eastern side of Cuba. Um, so that would be the only thing that's not included. And if you're going to do self-guided, um, just the only thing that's recommended is to save your receipts and to make a little journal, you know, at the end of your day of what you did, uh, nothing extravagant, um, and uh, you're really uh, obligated to keep those receipts for five years. Okay, great. Uh, a couple of questions about the travel agent portal. Does it display um, cruise prices in Canadian dollars, and are there video or PowerPoint presentations like this one that can be downloaded to be shown to clients? Yes, absolutely. So um, the presentations are available um, in the portal to use for your clients. Um, they can be downloaded as well as different videos. Um, we've got an image library where you can download images if you want to make something of your own. Uh, there's a brochure order um, uh, facilitation within there. You can order as many brochures as you want, I think up to 25 at a time. Um, so yes, th those are available. And the um, as far as bringing up pricing, pricing is more polar. So any price, you're not going to find pricing in the travel professional portal. You'd find that in polar. And I believe there is a way to get Canadian pricing. However, we only do transactions in U.S. dollars. Okay, thank you. Um, can you give us a little bit more information briefly about uh, student groups? Sure, absolutely. So the details around that, number one, it's a target market for us, so you should know that, so feel confident in selling student groups with Fathom. Um, we do require one adult chaperone per five children, and per uh, the children for student groups need to be at least 12 years of age as compared to our minimum age of eight years. For the student group, they need to be at least 12. As far as uh, pricing, uh, it, that all comes comes down to just sort of a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with one of our directors. Um, but for the initial details, it's one for five and uh, must be at least 12. Okay, great. We just have time for uh, one more two-part question. And I want to remind our agents on this webinar that if we did not get to your question or if you uh, think of something after the webinar is over, uh, Kim does have all this wonderful contact information available. And um, please do get in touch with Fathom um, to ask all of your questions. Our last couple of questions have to do with alcohol. <laughs> and that is, mm -hmm. uh, is beer <laughs> available on board? Can, uh, is beer available? And uh, you mentioned that you can bring alcohol onto the ship. Can you buy alcohol in Cuba to bring back home with you? 
Yes, great question. So um, any type of alcohol is available on board Adonia, uh, including beer, uh, lots of different spirits, wine, of course. Um, now, as far as, and but all of that would be at an extra cost. Now, um, when you're in port, so when you're in Havana or Cienfuegos or Santiago de Cuba, you will have the opportunity to purchase alcohol. You can, there's, remember, it's unlimited. You can purchase as much Cuban uh, rum as you want. Um, and when you bring it back on the ship, now this policy could change, but the way it stands right now is they actually will not confiscate that. Um, a lot of cruise lines, when you're out in port and you bring alcohol on, back on board, they'll you know, put your cabin number, name, and stuff on it, and you can collect it at the end of the cruise. The way we're doing it right now is you actually get to take that alcohol back with you to your room and drink it on board. Um, so know that is available. It's just at the initial embarkation in Miami, it's restricted to one bottle of wine or one bottle of champagne per person. And no matter where we are, believe me, you will always have an opportunity to either purchase cigars or uh, Cuban rum while, while we are in Cuba. And with that, I'm afraid we're out of time. This has been absolutely fantastic. Our host Great. for today's webinar has been Fathom Travel, and our wonderful speaker has been Kim Mustin, Sales Coordinator for Fathom. Kim, thank you so much for all of this great information. My pleasure. And I want to thank all of our agents again for taking time out of your day for this really inf informative webinar. We know you got a lot out of it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>